In this lesson, we're going to look at the effects of DNA mutations. We're going to see what happens when a mistake is made during DNA replication that switches out a letter or adds a letter or removes a letter uh, from the DNA sequence, and that's called a, a mutation. So I've just drawn a, a sequence of DNA here. So this would be a gene or, or a portion of a gene where um, we've got the letters that would code for the amino acids that would make up a polypeptide which would produce a protein which would do some job in the cell, would carry out some aspect of metabolism um, in that cell. So first of all, we're just going to have to figure out well, which side of this DNA is the sense strand and which is the anti-sense strand. We can just randomly pick. The sense strand is the part of the DNA that's actually going to be transcribed uh, and turned into messenger RNA. The other side is just a template. It, it's not actually going to be transcribed. So for the purposes of this, we're going to assume that this one is not going to be transcribed. It's going to be the anti-sense strand, and that would make this one right here the sense strand. So as long as we remember that, we're going to be using the, the lower one here as our sense strand just to keep things straight. All right, so the first thing that has to happen under normal circumstances without any mutations happening is we're going to take that DNA and we're going to convert it into a molecule of mRNA. And the process uh, that accomplishes that is called transcription. So transcription, turning DNA into messenger RNA. And remember, it's the sense strand that's going to be transcribed, not the antisense strand. So what we're going to do is, we're again, we're just going to look at this short sequence here of nine nucleotides. And what's going to happen is the sense strand is C. So where we have a C, we're going to get a G. And where we have a G, we're going to get a C. And then we have a C. So we're going to get a G in the messenger RNA, and then another G, and then a G. And then, now you think this might be a T, because the A normally goes with T. But in messenger RNA, it's going to be a U. It's going to be uracil, not thymine, because there is no thymine in messenger RNA. All right, then the G will go with a C, the G will go with a C, and the T will go with an A. And that will continue on for however long this gene happens to be. We're just looking at a short sequence of it here. So that's the process of making the messenger RNA. The messenger RNA then goes through a process called transcription. Sorry, translation. Let's not get that wrong. Goes through a process called translation to build a structure called a polypeptide. Now, a polypeptide is a sequence of amino acids coded for by three-letter codons of the messenger RNA. So the messenger RNA would be grouped into groups of three. And each group of three is going to code for a particular amino acid. Now, biology, high school biology students do not have to memorize which codons code for which amino acids. On a test, you'd be given a table with all of that information. So you just have to look it up. So if we look up on the table, what does GCG stand for? Well, it stands for the amino acid alanine. Then we would look up GGU in the table, and GGU stands for the amino acid glycine. And then in our short little sequence here, we have CCA codon, and that codes for the amino acid proline. So as long as everything's working properly, and we do this transcription followed by translation, we would end up with the polypeptide with the three amino acids in it here, alanine, glycine, and proline. Now, for a polypeptide, the order of the amino acids is everything because it determines the shape of the polypeptide. It determines how it folds and bends and how it interacts with other polypeptides to make proteins. And shape for a protein is what determines what it does in the cell, how it carries out what, what its role is in metabolism. So as long as the order of the amino acids is correct, and we have here alanine, glycine, proline, then the shape will be correct and it will fit with other molecules in the cell and will do its job properly and metabolism will go off without a hitch. However, what if a change is made? So a change is what we call a mutation. So we're going to look at a variety of different types of changes. The first type of change we're going to look at is something called a substitution mutation. Now substitution um, it's just switching one thing for another, okay? making the substitute. Substitute teachers. You're switching out your regular teacher for a different teacher. So here we're going to switch out one letter of the DNA code for another. And what we're going to switch out in this one is we're going to switch out this G right here. 
And we're just going to switch on these different colors just to make it show up. I'm just going to assume that during DNA replication, we accidentally put an A there instead of a G. Well, that would then change this one right here. That would change that to a T instead of what was going to be uh, a C there. So that's now going to be tran uh, transcribed improperly. So this T, which, well, was a C, so it was supposed to be a G. Well, it's not going to be a G anymore. Now it's going to be an A. And our codon that was GGU is now AGU. And we look at AGU on the, um, in the table. It doesn't make glycine anymore. It now makes the amino acid serine. And that's not the amino acid that was intended in this polypeptide. Now, changing one amino acid in the polypeptide that might have several hundred amino acids in the chain may or may not make a difference to the shape. Uh, it is possible it can make a difference to the shape because, remember, the order of amino acids determines the shape. Changing one may or may not cause a problem. But when we have a change of one amino acid in a polypeptide, we call that a missense mutation. Okay, it's kind of like it doesn't make sense anymore. It's, it's the wrong one. So that's a substitution that results in a missense mutation. It changes the sequence of, of amino acids in the polypeptide by switching out one uh, amino acid. Well, let's take a look at another possibility. Because not all mutations, substitutions, are going to result in missense. So let's put this back the way it was. Let's put everything back. So this was glycine. And we originally had a G here, which meant we had a C here, which meant we had a G here. So we're back to the way we were. So let's do a different substitution. Let's pick a different one here. Let's take this T. Now let's say that T was changed to an A. Well, that means on the sense side of the DNA, that would now be a T. And that T would then be transcribed on the messenger RNA into an A. So let's see what GGA stands for in our table. Let's go look it up. So we look up GGA, and well, look at that. It makes glycine anyway. So that change made no difference to the order of amino acids in the polypeptide which means it makes no difference to the shape of the polypeptide, which means the protein that this polypeptide is a part of will just carry on as normal. It won't do anything differently than it, than it should have done, which means it made no difference. So we sometimes call this a silent mutation, because even though a mistake is made, and that mistake is, is made during DNA replication, that mistake had no consequence to the metabolism of the cell. The cell carries on as normal. There's no problem. There's no disease. Everything's good. So we call that a silent mutation. All right, so we got lucky on that one. Let's see what else could happen here. Let's put everything back the way it was before. So this is still glycine. Put this back. This was T, which made this an A, which made this a U. All right, so we're back to where we started. Now, let's say that we have, instead of a substitution mutation, Let's do something called an addition mutation. Now, an addition mutation is where well, we add a letter. We get an extra letter put into the DNA code by mistake. So let's say during DNA replication that uh, after the first GCG, we get an A stuck in there. We're adding a letter that doesn't belong. Well, that means in the uh, sense strand of the DNA, we'd be adding a T that doesn't belong. And that means in our messenger RNA that's transcribed, we would be getting an A inserted there between those two Gs, and that doesn't belong. Well, now that's going to change our codons, because codons are groups of three letters. So we're going to have to switch those up. So our codons now, we're going to have an AGG, and then we're going to have a UCC, and then this A is going to become part of the next two letters in the chain and make a different codon than it did before. So our first uh, codon here is still going to make alanine. That's not going to change anything. GCG is still the same thing. But what about AGG? Well, AGG is not glycine. 
if I look up on the table for A, G, G, it happens to be R, G, a different amino acid with a different shape and a different way of bonding with other amino acids and other polypeptides. But what about this UCC? Before we had proline, well, UCC, if we check that one up um, on the table, I believe UCC is serine. So we've got a different amino acid there. And then you can imagine the next one, this, this wasn't supposed to begin with an A, well now it begins with an A. The next amino acid, whatever that one is, be, is going to be wrong, which means we're not just changing one amino acid, we're not just switching out one and then maybe it makes a difference, maybe it doesn't. We're switching all of the ones that occur after this alanine. This is the only one that's correct. All the rest, all the subsequent ones on the chain, all the way down the list, are going to be incorrect. So that's bound to cause a big problem. That's bound to make that polypeptide non-functional. It's not going to bind with other polypeptides to make a protein. That protein's not going to have the right shape. And that is going to cause a metabolic problem for that cell and cause disease. Now, when you have a, a situation like that, we say that the frame of the codons, the frame of the codon here and the frame of the codon here, the letters that line up in groups of three, that's been shifted over by one. So we call this a frame shift mutation. A frame shift mutation is where you move the codons over by a letter and that causes significant issues with that polypeptide. Not just one amino acid, a whole bunch of amino acids. Now you can imagine if an addition mutation can do that, well, a deletion mutation could do that too. A deletion mutation could shift the frames because if you're missing a letter, you could shift the frame of the codons as well. I'm not going to go through a whole example of that because you can see if you do the same thing as adding a letter, you just shift those codons over. If you're missing a letter in the messenger RNA here, well, then these codons get shifted over, and this now becomes GCU, and this becomes CA, and whatever the next letter is. And you can see how that's going to cause the same problem that an addition, or sometimes we call those addition mutations, insertion mutations. Having an extra letter or missing a letter is going to change the, the frame of the codons, the frame shift mutations, and they make a significant difference to the polypeptide that's produced. 